Today I'm bringing to you three great semiconductor dividend stocks. They all have been hit pretty hard the last few weeks and are currently undervalued in trading on the doorstep at their 52 week low. In the last video I kind of teased Broadcom and that's the first one on our list. So if you're ready, let's jump into it. Our first stock is Broadcom, ticker symbol AVGO. Broadcom is the combined entity of Broadcom and Avigo. Avigo focuses primarily on their radio frequency filters that are in smartphones such as Apple and Samsung. Broadcom focuses on networking semiconductors. They are also currently in a deal to acquire VMware to boost its offering in software. From the start of the year, Broadcom has fallen 30.58%. In this last month, they have fallen 8%, bringing them to a current share price of $460.48. They are very close to their 52 week low of $443, and they have a current market cap of $186 billion, and are trading at a PE of 12.31. Broadcom has a great dividend yield at 3.56%, and that will give you an annual payout of $16.40. Their payout ratio is 46.86% and have a current five-year growth rate of 32.08%. And they have been steadily growing that dividend for the last 10 years. So you can offer gives them a dividend safety score of A+, and a dividend growth score of A+, and a dividend tracker gives them a safety score of 85. Over on their income statement, looking at their revenue, Broadcom has steadily been increasing their revenue year over year, which is pretty great. So they had $20.25 billion and currently at $31.68 billion. Let's go on here to their net income and looking at their net income, they have steadily been increasing year over year. You can see in 2018, they had a spike up from their half a billion dollars to $11.77 billion. And that was when they had a acquisition of CA Technologies in 2018. And ever since then has steadily been growing. Now moving over to Seek and Alpha, for the rest of the income statement because everything money doesn't seem to have that data. So anyways, for their earnings per share, we can see that they have year over year been growing their earnings per share, which is pretty great with that spike up in 2018, which makes sense on their acquisition. And they have been growing ever since then. And right down here for their shares outstanding, we can see that they did have an increase in 2018, which makes sense for an acquisition. And they bought back couple shares there and then started increasing the shares and this last year started buying back shares again. So kind of on and off for Broadcom. Over on the cash flow, scroll down here for the free cash flow. We can see that Broadcom has been increasing their cash flow year over year, which is great to see. And that brings to a current five year average of $11.2 billion. And over on their cash flow, we're going to scroll down here to look at their free cash flow. And how you calculate free cash flow is by taking your cash from operations, this line right here, and subtracting your capital expenditures, which is this line right here. That'll give you your free cash flow. And the reason free cash flow is important is it allows the company to do five different things, which is pay dividends, buy back shares, pay down debt, make acquisitions, and reinvest back in the company. So looking right here for the free cash flow, we can see that Broadcom has been steadily increasing their free cash flow year over year which is great. And that brings to a five year average of $11.2 billion. Now we're on their balance sheet. The first thing I wanna look at is calculate their current ratio, which is their current assets divided by their current liabilities. And for this value, you wanna see a value greater than 1.2, showing that the company is in a healthy financial state. So scroll down here, looking at their current assets, we have $15.56 billion. And going on here for their current liabilities, we have $16.78 billion. And dividing those two values, we'll get 2.32%. So great for a Broadcom. One more thing we want to calculate is we want to take their long-term liabilities of $43.72 billion and divide it by the five-year average free cash flow that we just looked at, which was $11.2 billion. And dividing the two, we come to just under four years, it'll take Broadcom to pay off all their long-term liabilities. Taking out what Wall Street analysts see as price targets for Broadcom, we can see that a low price target of $545, which is about 18% higher than the current share price, which is pretty good. And then an average of $665. So that's about 44% upside. So a lot of room to move there for Broadcom. Now we want to take a look at what analysts are estimating as the revenue forecast and they're looking at about 10% increase in the next three years. Now taking those into consideration, I'm going to go for my revenue growth assumptions of one, three, and 5%. And then for my profit margin and free cash flow margin, I'm gonna use the historical data here and for profit margin use 15, 18, and 21%, and free cash flow margin of 
32, 36, and 40%. And for PE and price to free cash flow, I'm gonna go from 14, 16, and 18 for both of them and a 10% return rate. And the current value will be just in, in between my mid and high assumptions for discounted cash flow. Right now, I do see Broadcom as being a fair value and it's pretty much on this 52 week low and going in a negative trend. So I think it's at a fair value right, fair value right now. And I have been keeping my eye on Broadcom and uh, personally, I've been I'm picking up some shares in this. Over here on the chart analysis, we can see that the current value right here being at around that $450 range right here. The last time it was at this support level was back in May and April of 2021. And it finally broke out of there and had this nice run up. Being at the support, looking down here, we are at a negative trend. So there's a possibility of us falling to our 200 day moving average, which is this white line right here. And that would bring us around $400. And after we break through, if we do, this 250 support level, the next one is down here at 360. So we would have a long, long way down if this downward trend continues. However, if the trend does move upwards, we could bounce up here and go to the 100 day moving average which is around this 500 day. So some possibilities there. Definitely once again, think that Broadcom is at a great price right now to pick up some shares. Next stock we're going over is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, ticker symbol TSM. And Taiwan Semiconductor is the world's largest dedicated chip foundry with over 57% market share in 2021. And the foundry is a leader in customer base, including Apple, AMD, and NVIDIA in cutting edge process technologies to its semiconductor designs. Over the last year, Taiwan Semiconductor has fallen 45.58%, and over the last month, it has fallen 11.48% bringing them to a current share price of $69.75. They're trading very close to their 50 week low of $67.67. They have a current market cap of $357 billion and are trading at a PE of 11.21. Type 1 Semiconductor has a dividend yield of 2.7% and I'll give you an annual payout of $1.88. Their payout ratio is 7.15% and they have a growth rate for the last five years of 10.33% and have been growing that dividend at a nice one year. <laughs> Seeking Alpha gives them a dividend safety score of C minus, dividend growth score of C plus, and dividend tracker gives them a safety score of 81. Over an income statement, we're gonna be looking at their revenue, and we can see here that they have been growing their revenue year over year, with a little stagnation in 2018 and 2019, but have definitely been rebounding since then. Going on here to their net income, because they hear, just like the revenue, they have been growing their revenue year over year, with a little, little dip there in, 2019, just like their revenue, but I've been rebounding since then. Over here at their earnings per share, we can see that they have been growing their earnings per share year over year with a slight drop in 2019, but have definitely made up for it since then. And over here for shares outstanding, looking to see if they have been buyback shares. And we can definitely look at right here that they have pretty much kept the same amount of shares the last so many years. Good to see versus them issuing shares. So. Not a bad thing keeping the same amount. And right down here for looking at their dividend per share, we can see that calculation is not entirely correct, but they have been increasing year over year with a slight drop in 2019. Over in their cash flow, scrolling down here, looking at their free cash flow, and we can see here that they have been growing their free cash flow with a slight drop in 2020, which is understandable. Um, other than that, we do have a bump up in 2018. Since the last few years, we have nice rebound right there. So that'll bring up to a five-year average of $8.84 billion. Scrolling in here, looking at their current assets, we can see it's $60.07 billion. Scrolling down once again for their current liabilities. We can see here that they have $26.64 billion. So taking the difference of those two, we come to a ratio of 2.26%, which is great for a Taiwan Semiconductor. Once again, down here, we're gonna look at its long-term liabilities and we have a value of $31.21 billion. And dividing that by the five-year average of $8.8 billion, we come to a calculation of three and a half years that it'll take for Taiwan to pay off all their liabilities. As far as Wall Street analysts, they are looking at a low price target of $83 which is about 19% from the current share price and an average of $114. And analysts are looking at a 22% revenue increase in the next three years. So for my calculations based on the assumptions we saw, I'm gonna choose 9%, 12%, and 15% for my revenue growth. For my profit margin and free cash flow margin, keeping it close to the historic data here, we have 20, 
32 and 36 percent for the profit margin and 15 18 and 21 for the free cash flow margin for the pe and price free cash flow i'm keeping it at 14 16 and 18 for both of them and a 10 percent return so looking here the current share price is right in between my medium and high price assumptions and definitely i think that taiwan semiconductor is in a fair value range right now and is in a negative trend as well so it possibly could even get close to the 60 dollars range speaking of downward trend looking here at the chart we can see the current value right here is definitely in a downward trend and it has broken this 200 day moving average so the last support it had was over here at around 76 75 dollars and that was around its 200 day moving average as you can see right here so it's broken through the last support it had and it's 200 day moving average. So the, lot, the next support it has is gonna be around that 57, $60 range. Very well might continue falling down to that support level, being in the negative trend if it doesn't turn up. I think it's in a fair value right now and you could possibly continue buying it as the price falls. If you've been finding value in this content, let me know by smashing the like button, it helps grow the channel. And also comment down below if you have any of these semiconductor dividend stocks in your portfolio or on your watch list. Next up is Qualcomm, ticker symbol QCOM. And Qualcomm develops and licenses wireless technology and designs chips for smartphones. And they're also the world's largest wireless chip vendor. Since the past year, Qualcomm has fallen 35%. And within the last month, they have fallen about 5% bringing them to a current share price of $120.91. Currently trading very close to their 52 week low of $112, which was right at the end of last month. They have a current market cap of $135 billion and are trading at a PE of 9.64. Qualcomm has a dividend yield of 2.48% and I'll give you an annual payout of $3. Their current payout ratio is 23.35% and they have a five-year growth rate of 5.39% and have been growing that dividend consistently for the last 18 years. Seeking Alpha gives them a dividend safety score of A- and a dividend growth score of A+. And the dividend tracker gives them a dividend safety score of 78. Over on the income statement, looking at the revenue, we can see here that Qualcomm has steadily been growing year over year with slight drop in 2020, which is understandable, and have rebounded since then. Going on here for the net income, and just like their revenue, we have seen them grow year over year with a slight drop in 2020, and have rebounded since. Next, looking at their earnings per share, we can see here that they have been growing steadily year over year with a nice run up from 2020. And for their shares outstanding, we can see that they have been buying back shares a couple years ago was 1.48 billion shares and now they're at 1.12 billion shares. And for their dividends per share, we can definitely see that they have been growing their dividend year over year, even in 2020 with the drop in revenue. Over on the cash flow, scroll on here for their free cash flow. And as you can see here, they have been steadily growing their, their free cash flow, kind of stagnant these last couple years and drop in 2020. And they did rebound off of that and now they're back down. And that is due to their acquisition of Cellwise Wireless uh, back earlier this year. And now bringing them to a five-year average of $6.15 billion. So on their balance sheet, scrolling down here to their current assets, we can see that they have $19 billion. And we're gonna divide that by their current li liability, which is $11.83 billion. They'll bring it to a ratio of 1.61%. So very good in our sweet range that we're looking for. Going down once again to look at their long-term liabilities, which is $19.14 billion. And we're gonna divide that by the five-year average of free cash flow, which was $16.15 billion. And that'll give us just above three years to pay off all of their liabilities. For Wall Street analysts, they are looking at a low price target of $131, which is about 9% upside from the current share price and an average of $190. For their estimate revenue forecast, they're looking at an increase of about 14%. So taking those assumptions into consideration, I'm going with one, three and 5% for the revenue growth for my profit margin and free cash flow going with the historic data. So I have 14, 16 and 18 and 15, 18 and 21 for both of those. And then PE and price of free cash flow, I'm going from 12, 14 and 16 for both with a 10% return. Now bring you to the current share price being right in the middle of my mid and high assumptions. So right now I do think that Qualcomm is trading at a fair value and I do have it in my portfolio if you guys <laughs> see my other portfolio updates. So I will be picking up some shares of Qualcomm. Next looking at its chart analysis and you can kind of see a similar trend with that of the other two we've been talking about. We are in a negative trend right here and 
Qualcomm is touching its 200 day moving average and that 200 day moving average was a support back in September of 2020. And if we break through that support and the moving average right here, the next support is around 92 and $90. So very well, we could drop even further if we break that next support. If the trend does turn upwards, because we do see it's turning a little bit here, we might be able to ride that $120 for a while here, staying on that 200 day moving average. Either way, I think Qualcomm's at a great price right now. As a bonus for you guys, I have another stock is Advanced Micro Devices, ticker so AMD. Although it's not a dividend stock, it is trading as 52 week low, so I wanted to share it with you guys. And it has been pretty big comparison with Intel. So right now, since the beginning of the year, it has fallen 61%. Since the beginning of the month, it has fallen 25.68%. So it's trading, like I mentioned, as 52 week low, which was $58 and 22 cents. So right there. Its current market cap is $94 billion and is trading at a PE of 14.83. Now, Wall Street analysts are looking at a low price target of $85, so about 47% upside and an average of $126. And as far as revenue, they're looking at an increase of about 28%. So looking at those Assumptions, I'm going with a branded growth of 9, 11, and 13%, profit margin of 4, 7, and 10%, and a free cash flow margin of 4, 6, and 8%. And for my PE and price to free cash flow, I'm going at a 14, 16, and 18, and a return rate of 10%. AMD right now is at a 62 week low. Based on these assumptions, I do think there is room for it to continue to fall. I'm looking at around that $40 range as you can see right here. From the price that it's been at for a while, I do think it's getting at a closer to a fair price range, but not just there yet. Over here looking at a chart analysis, just like all the other ones we've looked at, broke through its 200 day moving average. What's sitting at right now is its current support. Looking back here, we can see in May of 2020, and as well as February of 2020, it was sitting right at this $55 range. So if it breaks through this support level, which it very well will be because if looking down here is that a negative trend and could possibly fall to the next one, which would be around the 35, 40 range, which is kind of my price target I'm looking at. So very well with this negative trend, it could continue falling down there. So definitely keep your eye on it if you're interested in AMD. That was up the three semiconductor dividend stocks I have for you guys today. And if you're looking for others to buy in October, definitely check out this next video right over here where I go over five great stocks at a discount. With that, I'm Eddie V and I'll catch you next one. Peace.